All right. So we are getting right into it because I forgot to hit record, which is why there's already color on the page. Hey guys, guess what? Today is a marker sketch with me Monday where I do a marker sketch and upload it on a Monday, usually a portrait. Today's subject is actually Lizzo, who I am a huge fan of. Um, like I said, I forgot to hit record. So, I don't remember what color I started off with, but in the end of the video, there will be a portion where I go through and swatch out the colors that I used. And I've started doing that because I have a lot more markers, a lot more, yeah, a lot more markers, but like a specifically a portrait set. And I feel that the swatches that I did on the little piece of paper there that came with the Ohuhu set does they don't really they're not giving what they need to be giving if we're telling the truth the sketches are i mean the swatches are accurate but like they're just kind of randomly thrown together and so i always find myself having to do swatches on the side of the paper on a a different paper or the side of the paper. I've been trying to keep this in particular, this sketchbook, pretty nice and neat, which is not really common for me. And so I've been swatching on a different page, which you can actually see that page there. So yeah, that's what I'm working on. Lizzo, she has her head back actually, and her hands are in screen eyes closed so it's kind of a different portrait oh and head on as well so it's definitely a different portrait than what i usually do on this page on this channel i mean generally i was looking through pictures to draw and i was just like why is it that all of my drawings feature a person facing left so I'm trying to switch it up a bit. I have a couple of different kin kin <laughs> skin tones represented in this sketchbook. So I want to keep that up. I'll probably do someone with lighter skin in the next one. Don't hold me to it. But, you know, I might. We'll see. Uh, but this one is a different position completely. And there are fingers included. I only did three. And I left one of them white because I just could not be bothered, honestly. I am, yeah, I, I just didn't feel like it. But, you know, it still came out nice. The fingers don't really, or the lack of that finger doesn't really take much away from the drawing. I realized once I was done, though, that I forgot to do a background. And yes, I use the term background loosely because it would have just been color on the the back of the behind the subject but whatever the focus is the portrait which actually I think came out pretty well although it's not as symmetrical is it symmetrical or symmetric although everything doesn't line up in the way that it should <laughs> I still really like it, so I think I'm going to start, like, when I'm doing my sketching, taking more time to make sure that things line up properly. I did used to do, like, a grid system, but I think, like, with these portraits and uploading them and et cetera, et cetera, I've started to get a little lazy, which is not good because I do still want to create content that I'm actually happy with. And so I'm going to have to start focusing a little bit more. I think I'm going to definitely go back to that gridding thing. And I didn't do like a full grid. What it was was more so me drawing a line down from the inner corners of the two eyes and the outer corners and kind of lining that up with where it should hit the nose and then drawing a line across the eyes the bottom and the top so that those two were lined up and then 
you know, doing something similar with the mouth. But basically just making sure that everything was in the place that it should be. So, to get back to what's actually going on in the screen, right now I am using a blending technique to blend a really dark color with something that's not quite as deep. It's actually working out pretty well for me, I would say. I don't usually make such large jumps, but, you know, I, I kind of, as far as markers and chisel nibs, I kind of have an idea of the way to get them to blend pretty well together, or if they're not blended that well, if they're not blended as perfectly as they would be with a... a what is it called? Bendy nib? <laughs> I don't know. I'm blanking. If they're not blended as well as they are with the other kind of nib, like I still have an idea of how to get them to have the illusion of being blended from that certain amount of distance that you'll be seeing it at. So now, just working on the eyes. The eyes are definitely different than the eyes in the actual image. She has on makeup, and I'm just lazy. So I really just put down a bunch of colors just to emphasize the depth, which is really what I've worked hard on throughout this whole piece. And mostly in all of my pieces, I try to definitely show depth. Um, and it's been at the expense of accurately placing not colors but features and so I want to you know get better at both but I just really like I just didn't feel like doing her eyeshadow and I, I assume it had something to do with the fact that I did this at 3 a.m. or 2 a.m. whatever time it was it was pretty late and so I know that I'm gonna have to ooh, I'm going to have to start doing a little bit better with my time management so that I am not skimping on quality um, in favor of quantity. So I am now doing her eyebrows. I tried to not use too many markers. I actually, I have, what's that, five next to me and one in my hand, but I ended up not using one of those. I wasn't, I actually took out that extra one that I didn't use initially. That was going to be my deepest tone for her face. Not the dark, not the deepest one for the shadows underneath her chin, next to her chin, and around her hair, but the deepest tone for her face. So in the hollows of the cheekbones. But I decided that the one that I ultimately used was a better idea. And I am happy that I made that decision, so, yeah, it is what it is. I, honestly, I'm watching the video as I'm doing this voiceover, and I'm actually really enjoying the way that this one, this came out. I tried to make sure to not use the same colors as my last pieces. And that's specifically because I want to, I want to try out as many of these markers as I can. And I know that I might have to use the same markers again, you know, at some point. But as far as testing the actual, um, the actual strength of the... What's the, what am I trying to say? I'm testing the versatility. I think that's what I mean. As far as testing the actual versatility of these markers, I decided that I wanted to try to use as many of them as possible because it's kind of, you know, it's kind of useless if I have 36 markers and I decide to use the same three and four over and over again, which I definitely could do because I... I think I had mentioned in another video, probably 
the one from last week's Marker Sketch Monday, you know, number two, I'd mentioned that I, for years, used probably like the five or six same markers for skin tones, specifically for darker skin tones. And I did all kinds of uh, commissions and projects and etc etc like I did so many different things with them and you know they all generally came out the correct skin tone so I don't think that quantity is really all that important when it comes to markers but if I have quantity then you know might as well use it which is funny because now kind of realizing that the fact that I don't really have quantity when it comes to uh like I guess colors that aren't brown and beige, I don't use those colors. So like for the eyeshadow and for the lips, it would have been beneficial for me to have more of a red and not like a brownish red, but more of like a red red because she's wearing lipstick, she's wearing eyeshadow. I think you can tell that she's wearing lipstick and that might be more so because of the fact that I added such a bright highlight in the middle of her bottom lip but you know she's wearing lipstick and eyeshadow but the fact that I didn't really have the right color is another reason that I didn't really bother to try to layer and you know change the color so I think as far as reds go I probably have like two and they are not I know I'm thinking of one in particular. It's definitely like a dull red. It's not a very beautiful red. And it's not like a dull red in in the way that I could use it for a skin tone. It might be something nice to layer under skin color. But as you can see, I don't actually do too, too much layering anyway. So you know, it would be kind of kind of a waste to have gone all the way to my room to get the rest of my markers so that I could do her eyeshadow in the brownish red and try to make that marker work. I've actually, off on another tangent, I've actually been thinking about getting the 200 set Ogulu Bullet Nib, no not Bullet, the 200 set Ogulu Chisel Tip and Bullet nib markers I think my only the, the thing that's really holding me back is first of all like two weeks ago they were like $96 and now they're telling me I have to pay $110 on Amazon I don't like that <laughs> so you know we, we, we might not be doing that for a while until they go back down to like 95 or maybe just 100 the other thing that's stopping me is that I think I'll be buying the same portrait set again. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I'm not sure, but it seems that I would be I would have to buy the same portrait set and I'm not really I'll say I'm not into that, although it's not really the worst thing. Quick side note. I messed up the hair like I drew I drew, I used that color for the hair, like some of it got on her face. So irritated. But I was like, whatever, we'll just keep going. And just not be too upset and just keep going. But I think that I would be buying that same 36 set that I have all over again if I got the 200 set. Which, but what I was saying was that it might not be that bad because they still don't have Ohuhu open stock, which is ridiculous to me. Anyway, because they, these markers go for about 50 cents a marker, no matter the size you get. And honestly, they could make so much money off of just me. <laughs> like, if, you could, if they decided to sell them open stock, I would be willing to pay probably 150 to $2 a marker to buy them, to replace the ones that I need open stock, because... I already have this set, and if there's certain ones that need to be replaced, like, $2 is nothing to just replace it. And clearly, I'm not going to just buy one marker for $2. Um, 
to have it shipped to me because I'm going to have to pay for some shipping, so I'm going to buy more markers. I'll probably end up buying, like, 10 markers or so, and just off of that, like, it was supposed to be 50 cents, and now you're selling them for $2, which means that you're making, what, 150% more? I digress. Finally, we are at the end of this video, and I, I love doing these voiceovers, but I feel like I just need to talk me out your off. So... I'm glad we got to the end of this video where I can say, feel free to watch my marker sketch with me Mondays on mute, or just put them on mute and play music that you actually like, so you don't have to hear my nonsense. But, so what I'm doing is just watching out the colors that I did use. The one on the left, on the top, that's the one that I used for the first layer of the skin tone. Very pretty pink, but it was a little too pink for my liking, but, you know, I... I knew how to kind of neutralize that a little bit using layering. It's usually what I use layering, layering for, just to kind of darken what needs to be darkened. But anyway, we've come to the end of my video. Just want to say, I hope you guys have a great day. Please comment, like, subscribe, the works. Thank you so much for being here. Have a great day.